In this video, I'm going to be making a beautiful purple sheath for the Serenity Dagger. The first thing I need to do to make this dagger sheath is to lay out and begin cutting all my leather pieces. To get the layout on the leather, I just used a cardboard template and then traced around it with a regular pen. I try to be accurate as I'm cutting along my layout lines with the razor knife. I don't want to veer off of those lines very much because all the pieces will come together better if I cut everything more accurately. I use my cardboard template to lay out some lines on the shark skin that's going to be on the throat and tip areas of the sheath and then begin cutting those out as well. The black pieces on the right will be the inside of the sheath. The middle tan pieces will be the ones that are going to get tooling and dye later. And then the black pieces on the left are for the throat and tip areas of the outside of the sheath. A couple of my favorite things about shark skin are the texture on it and the thickness and flexibility of it works really well to put on the outside of sheath. Next, I apply contact cement to the tan part of the sheath that'll be on the outside and the black part of the sheath that's gonna be the inside. With contact cement, I apply it to the pieces and then let the contact cement dry for five to 10 minutes before putting the pieces together. With contact cement on the pieces, you gotta be careful where you place them. I got this off-centered a little bit and was able to lightly peel it off. Thankfully, it wasn't fully stuck on there yet. After my second attempt, I was able to center the pieces and get them glued together where I want. And that's when I add the contact part of the contact cement. I lightly tap with a leather hammer over the entire surface. This makes the two pieces basically become one and they'd be very, very difficult to actually tear apart now. The next thing I need to do is mark out where the throat and tip areas will be covered with shark skin because we're gonna tool everything else in between. So I need to know exactly where those throat and tip areas begin and end. I asked my brother Josh to print up a couple sheets of diamond shaped grids. I'm lining up both sheets of paper so that the grid matches all the way across both pieces. Next, I use a small cutter to mark out the perimeter of where I want the tooling to begin and end. Now comes the part where I'm gonna use the grid on the paper. I center the leather with the grid on the paper and then hold a ruler over the grid, just kind of eyeballing it to make sure it's lined up with the grid. And I can take a small cutter and make a cut. Once I do that process to each line on the grid, I'll have a nice quilted kind of diamondy grid pattern going across the center of the sheath. After cutting in all the diagonal lines in one direction across the leather, I begin working on the other direction. That forms a grid onto the leather that's gonna give me the pattern that I'm going for. Something else you might've noticed, I have a little office tape on the ends of the leather just to keep it from moving around because I want it to stay centered on this grid. After cutting in the grid pattern on the front and back of the sheath, I wet the leather down, let it sit for about 10 minutes for the water to soak in, and then begin running over all the grid pattern with a leather stamping tool. Normally you would use this tool with a hammer and stamp in a particular pattern, but I'm just using the corner of it to kind of accent the grid and make it stand out a lot more. While the leather's wet, just with hand pressure, I can shove the corner of this tool down into the leather, making the grid pattern stand out a lot more and be a lot more 3D as well. Instead of it just having light cuts on the surface, it'll now have little grooves that actually are pressed into the leather. It'll also give the edges of all these little diamonds a little bit of a pillowed effect. Once that's done, I go over all the places where two lines intersect with each other and punch with a small rounded tool The next tool I'm using is a small border punch. I'm gonna use this all the way around the perimeter of the tooled area, and this will frame in the tooling and make it look complete. I use a Dremel tool to rough up the leather where I'm gonna glue on the shark skin. If I don't rough the leather up, the contact cement doesn't work very well at all. If it has a little bit of a rough texture though, the contact cement will adhere so much better. Before I add the throat and tip shark skin areas, it's time to dye the tooled areas of the sheath. I want the sheath to look like it really matches the dagger. The handle on the dagger is beautiful charite stone that has a nice purple hue to it. So I'm using something I've never tried out on leather before, and that's some purple leather dye. I dilute the dye with some denatured alcohol, 
to lighten the color up a little bit. I use a regular airbrush to apply the dye to the tooled areas of the sheath. I sprayed one side of the sheath, but something's not looking quite right. Uh, I can't put my finger on it. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray the other side of the sheath for now. The areas on the top and bottom of the sheath that I roughed up are nice and purple, but the areas that I actually wanted purple are looking kind of green or brown or there's a weird tint to the leather. I decided to wipe the leather down to see if the green tint is just on the surface and to my shock and horror, the leather dye did not soak into the leather at all. It's completely just sitting on the surface and didn't penetrate the leather. I mean, not even a little bit. This is a really big problem. I was not expecting this at all. With the power of hindsight, I know what happened and why the leather stain didn't soak into the leather. During the tooling process, I didn't have everything clean enough and I got some kind of little sticky fingerprints on a couple different places. I decided to lightly wipe them down with a little denatured alcohol, thinking that I would be able to wipe those sticky fingerprints off. They didn't really come off, so I did something that I kind of thought could come back and hurt me, and I wiped the fingerprints down with a little bit of acetone on a paper towel, and I'm almost 99.9% .9 certain that's what did it. I had to completely scrap the tooled portions of the sheath and start over with some fresh leather. This time, I'm spraying them down before I do any tooling or anything on them. And here we are. This is how I wanted the first attempt to look. It just didn't happen. I messed it up, and here's my second attempt at it. We've got nice tooling going down the center of the sheath, nice, rich, deep purple color. At this point, I'm getting really excited about how this sheath is gonna look. I think this purple color is gonna darken up a little bit with my final finish. And then when I add the throat and tip shark skin areas, we're gonna have that black on there to contrast with the purple. I think it's gonna look amazing and I think it's gonna match my dagger so well. Now it's finally time to contact submit the shark skin overlays to the throat and tip areas of the sheath on the front and back. Once again, just like with every time I use contact cement, I apply it to both pieces that are gonna be stuck together, let it dry for five to 10 minutes, stick the pieces together, and then add the contact in contact with a little hammering action to make the pieces permanently stick together. Now that the shark skin's in place, I wanna add some stitching where the shark skin meets the tooled areas, right on the edge. So I begin by marking out where I want the stitches. I then use a stitch marker to lay out the spacing between each stitch. This is a fun tool with a little round wheel on the end that has something that looks like a gear or a sprocket. And you can get different ones that have different spacings to the teeth to make the stitches further or closer to each other. After using the stitch marker, I begin drilling holes where each stitch will go through the leather. I'm using a Dremel tool set up on this uh, funny little drill press attachment for the Dremel and a little tiny drill bit. The drill bit's turning really fast. It's kind of halfway drilling out the hole and halfway kind of burning out the hole. I don't want the stitch material to stick up above the surface on the inside of the sheath. Otherwise, it's gonna be scraping on the dagger blade as it goes in and out of the sheath. So I make a recess so that all the stitch sits below the surface and that way the blade won't hit on the stitches at all. After preparing some wax coated thread, I begin stitching the shark skin overlays. My process for stitching up the sheath involves two needles, one on each end of the thread. I begin with one needle by sticking it through a hole. And then from the other side, sticking it through the next hole because I'm doing two stitches at a time. The next thing I'll do is take the other needle and stick it through the next hole. And then once it's through, I'll stick it through the next hole on the other side. That way I'm covering two stitches with both needles. Once the string's through, I pull it tightly with both hands and that tightens up both of those stitches. 
I find two stitches at a time is the sweet spot. If I go more than that, then some of the stitches won't get pulled tight. And if I do less than that, then it's just overkill. If you're just doing one stitch at a time, that, that one stitch is getting pulled way too tightly. And in some cases, I've actually pulled too hard with one stitch at a time and had the string actually cut through the leather. Now that the sharkskin overlays are all stitched up, I can move on to adding the welt in the sheath. The welt is about a half inch wide strip of leather that's gonna go around the perimeter of the sheath. Add contact cement to the sheath and the welt. I accelerate the drying process a little bit with a heat gun and then apply the welt to the sheath. Once the welt's in place, I hammer around the perimeter of the sheath a little bit just to set the contact cement and make the pieces stick together better. Next, I trim off any excess welt that's sticking out past the rest of the sheath. Before I add the other half of the sheath to the half with the welt already glued onto it, I wanna make sure that the blade is gonna fit inside the sheath nicely. So I temporarily clamp the sheath together with some office clamps to see if the blade's gonna fit inside the sheath. I add and remove leather until I feel like the blade fits nicely inside the sheath. I also try to taper the welt to kind of match the blade. I don't want the pocket inside the sheath any larger than it needs to be because it'll just make the sheath look thicker than it needs to be. So the welt is actually thicker up near the guard and then it gets thinner and thinner as you go down to the tip. I think I'm happy with how the knife fits. It might be a tiny bit on the tight side, but after everything's all stitched up, I can leave the blade in the sheath for a day or two, and it'll probably stretch everything out to where it's just right. Now that I'm happy with the welt thickness, it's time to permanently contact cement the entire sheath together. The contact cement is some sticky, gooey stuff. I try my best to use the brush to spread the contact cement out evenly across the surface of the leather. Once the contact cement has set up, I add the front of the sheath to the back and the welt assembly, gluing all the pieces together. I do a test fit after contact cementing the pieces together. It's feeling a little tight, but I think it'll stretch out as I put the dagger in and out a few times. I should have done this before I added the welt, but late is better than never, so it's time to go ahead and add my K. Royer on one side of the sheath and MS on the other. Now that the entire sheath is one piece, I can grind all the edges down, get everything nice and flush, and then I can run along the edges with a little cutting tool and leave a groove for my stitching. That groove will allow the stitches to be below the surface of the leather. Once the groove for the stitching is made, I go over it with a stitch marker. This time, the stitch marking wheel I'm using leaves stitches that are much further apart from each other. That's because I'm gonna do some big, beefy, heavy-duty stitches around the perimeter of this sheath. Earlier, the stitches I did were much more delicate and light just for the overlay. 
but these stitches are gonna be what holds the entire sheath together and they're gonna be going through all this thick leather so I want them nice and beefy. This time though, I'm using a larger drill bit because I'm gonna be using larger string to stitch up the sheath. 5,000 holes later. Once all the holes are drilled in, I go back over the holes with a stitch marker. This will make the holes look nicer and just overall make the stitching look a little bit cleaner. I also go over the back of the sheath with my little grooving tool to make sure that the stitches on the back of the sheath will also sit below the surface of the leather and not on top of the surface. And just like I did with the shark skin overlays, I begin stitching the perimeter of the sheath up. This time though, I'm gonna need much more string. The entire sheath is gonna use up about 15 feet of string actually. A 15 foot piece of string would be too much to work with all at one time. So normally with a sheath this size, I like to use two shorter pieces that make it a little bit more manageable and there's not as much string to pull through every hole as you go. Earlier with the shark skin overlays, I only used one small strand out of the five total strands on my wax string. This time I'm using three out of the five strands, basically tripling the amount of string that I'm using to sew up the perimeter. Just like before, I do the same stitching method I was using on the shark skin overlays. Once the stitching's done, I wanna make them look nicer. So I lightly dampen all the stitches with some water. And then I run over the stitches with my stitch marker once again. And this is one of my favorite parts of sheath making. I love how running over the stitches with the stitch marker after you've done all the stitching just makes the stitches look so much more uniform and clean. It kind of flattens the stitches out, gives them nice curves, and it makes it so they just all look very uniform and consistent with each other. Whoopsie, we lost something there. And when I say the stitch marker gives it nice curves, what I mean is the stitches are kind of flat on the top and because of the shape of the stitch marker, it kind of domes the top of all the stitches and gives them a, a little bit more shape or curve. It really is kind of magical and so satisfying to me when I run the stitch marker over the stitches. It just instantly makes them look so much nicer. Now that the stitching's done, I wanna see how the dagger fits in the sheath. It's a little bit tight, but I think it's gonna be okay, especially if I can leave the blade in there for a day or two and let it kind of stretch the leather. I'd rather it be a little on the tight side rather than the loose side because the leather can stretch, but if it's a little too loose, there's not a lot I can do about it. Next up, I begin grinding and sculpting the edges of the sheath. This is where you can really elevate how your sheath looks. I like to dome the edges of the sheath a bunch and it really has a slimming effect on the sheath. If the edges aren't domed, everything looks and feels a lot chunkier and, and thick, but when you dome those edges, it just slims it right down and makes it look really nice. To do all this grinding and shaping on the edges of the sheath, I'm just using a fresh 120 grit J-Flex belt. While I'm at the grinder, I put a worn out 220 grit belt on, get the belt wet, get the edges of the leather wet and burnish the edges of the leather down using the grinder with the wet worn out belt on it. This helps lay down all the fibers and get the edges much more smooth. Now that the edges are shaped, I wanna go back over the stitching and over the edges with a little bit more of that purple dye. Grinding into the edges revealed some raw leather that doesn't have any dye on it. And also when I did the stitches, there's a little bit of leather down in between the stitches that just needs some dye so it doesn't stand out. After touching up the stain on the sheath, I wipe it down with a little bit of a wet sponge just to get rid of some of the excess leather dye in places that I don't need it. And now comes kind of a time consuming part of sheath making that I really enjoy. And that's to burnish the edges further and get them very, very smooth and shiny. I'm using a nice smooth piece of deer antler and some gum transacanth to try to get the edges to burnish and shine up. What I'm doing further lays the fibers down and continues making the edges of the leather smoother and smoother to the point to where they actually begin to get shiny. 
The burnishing process can take a while, but I love seeing the leather transform from being all fibrous to actually shiny and smooth. After letting the sheath dry overnight, the final step to finishing this sheath is to coat the sheath in leather finish. So for this, I'm using some Wyosheen. It's my absolute favorite leather finish, and I'm applying it once again with the airbrush. The Wyosheen leather finish is gonna help protect the leather, and it's gonna give it just a little bit of a shine. And after all that, here's the finished sheath for the Serenity Dagger. I love how the color scheme on this came out. Even though I had to start over on this sheath because I messed up on the first one, the second one came out beautifully. The purple complements the purple stone handle and the Serenity Dagger so well. And I love the black shark skin on the throat and tip areas and the black edges. I think those are gonna complement the gun blued black fittings on the dagger. And this thing is gonna match with the dagger beautifully. I'm so glad I didn't give up on the purple dye after the first failed attempt. It came out really, really nice. I could have easily just gone with black leather on the second attempt and not mess with the dye at all, but I'm really glad I stuck with it because I think it was totally worth it and it matches the dagger so much better now. I also feel like this sheath provided me with a lot of valuable learning experience, especially when it comes to leather dye. Late's better than never and now I definitely know not to let acetone get on my leather, especially before it's been dyed. Otherwise, the die will not do anything. <laughs> I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye!